Hi everybody, just a little update for you um, to kind of share my uh, worries and stresses amongst all the other issues, but um, we are having a lot of bad weather again. Uh, we had one nice day, which was last Thursday, weather was beautiful, absolutely perfect day amongst the days of rain. So this is last Thursday, and this is me up at uh, a place near, not too far away from here, about 15 minutes from here, but I found a whole field of buckwheat that was coming to flower really quickly, right near my apiary, that's also near a little chestnut, so it's going to be interesting flavour honey. But it just shows you how good the bees are. So have a look at this, and you'll see. It's our first beautiful day we've got with all the chestnut and flower. And as usual, everything's come at once. I'm surprised that this was only sown so recently, but already it's just started to flower. And I'll flip the camera around and give you some idea of the size of the field. You can see it's absolutely massive. So it's a good maybe two or three hectares, but it's absolutely alive with bees. And I can bet you that probably most of them are mine. If you just watch the surface, it's absolutely full of them. And the great thing is, up that way, by about 900 metres, is an apiary with 24 hives in that are absolutely going like hell for leather. And I know where they are, they're coming here. So this is absolutely amazing. And we've had a lot of rain. You can see how wet the soil is. It's really moist soil. So there's potential here for a really good crop, as well as everything else. As usual, though, it's not going to be... The one thing, it's going to be a mixture of everything, but it'll be strongly scented with buckwheat. <laughs> so um, this is lovely. Absolutely alive with bees. Just hope we get the good weather to continue. Well, I'll just show you kind of where we are. Um, I'm, at, I'm at home and I've got... Um, all my gear in the back of the truck here, it's a total mess. I haven't literally done any beekeeping for like two days. Because look at those puddles there. Can you see those puddles? Uh, that's how much rain we've had. I, I don't tend to cut the grass here if I can help it because I want the clover that's here to help feed my bees down the bottom of the garden. There's plenty of clover, sweet clover I think you call it. But the ground is there. We just have another huge amount of showers. I think you can see there the white clover. But I'll just show you the chestnut which is, we've got a couple of trees here. Obviously, well, who wouldn't have a couple of trees? But uh, lovely white clover here. Flip this around, and you can see all the clover we've got. Trouble is, it's like everything. It's always the same. We've gone from nothing to everything. I mean, the bees aren't even on this now because they've just we just had that big shower, which has just gone over that way. And it's, it's like tropical, really, you know? So you can see the chestnut. This is what we got. It's just coming out now. And there's some areas that is full of it, and some areas that hasn't even opened at all. I can just smell it when I try and smell it, but what we don't want is the rain washing all the nectar off, but hey-ho, that is what happens. So the situation is now, we have approximately two to three weeks of nectar flow to make money for the rest of the year. And that's what it is. So I'm getting a bit worried. But what can you do? The forecast is a lot better for later this week. It is warmer today. So I'm hoping that all the rain we've had will get to work and sink down and uh, um, do some good for the uh, for the soil. It probably won't affect the chestnut much other than keep the humidity up around the blooms up in the trees. But I can show you this bramble here, and this is what it will affect. Flip this around again. There's absolutely loads of bramble still to come. I mean, this is just a very quick snapshot of what's in front of my house. But we've got a load that's in flower, and there's also a load that hasn't even begun to come into flower yet. So, isn't it beautiful? 
that was the shower just gone over there. So look at this, I mean, you can see here, absolutely tons of flan. This is going to weep nectar when it does give because it's going to be 24 degrees next week and there's loads of moisture in the soil. So it could be good. As we say in this kind of uh, business, rags to riches, probably going to have that this year where we just don't know what's going to be in the supers. But bees are pretty dy dynamic, they're pretty amazing things. Many times you hear stories of people going to their hives after the flow's virtually finished and there's nothing. And they come back a week later and there's two supers of honey on the hives because it's just been correct. So we shall see. I'm uh, off up the road now just to do a couple of transfers. I've transferred a lot of nukes into, um, into hives so that I can, they will grow. That's my kind of thinking now that, um, and I described that management before, but my thinking was to get as many colonies that were in nukes into hives to use up hives I had stored because I want to get them into, into use and also to means that they will stay in there now ready for next year and be in, into production because I wanted to increase my production hives. But it also means I can take a split from them if they grow over this flow. So it's all good. I've had a, a couple of days, a bit easier, a couple of days where I've been just like re relaxing a bit, spend some time with the family because for the next few weeks we're going to be rushing around um, getting things organized for the big split which starts in about two to three weeks what i'm going to be doing is going to my strongest colonies in each apiary my very strongest colonies and taking off the surplus of bees from them because if i do it when they're out foraging i'm only going to be taking away mostly nurse bees which is what i want and the nurse bees have done their job to help bring that colony on in other words the forager bees are out foraging and most of the forager bees that are out foraging will stay out foraging while i take some of the colony away i'm not making the bits big split there's still time for the colony to um to grow and everything and in other words if it was going to swarm it just might take that edge off it and it gives me time to inspect it as well but that that means i can start the process of producing a few nukes before i have to before i have to go through the whole lot and do it all at once so it's just a little update it's just all hanging in the balance i'm really hoping that we're going to get some better weather i know the next couple of days aren't going to be that good but I, i'm kind of like right i know i know this doesn't affect anything but and it, it can't because we can't control the weather but i'm happy if it's going to rain now and pour down and pour down and pour down and then as long as it goes good after i'm like yep bring it on so, you know, every drop of rain that we get is, I say, nectar in the hives, you know, because this time of year, it's all critical to those next two weeks. So we shall see. I'll keep you updated. Anyway, take care. Bye for now.